What's up guys, my name is Alex and what we're going to talk about in this video is correlation and sports betting. So correlation really comes into play when you're making more complex bets such as parlays from the same game. A lot of sports books such as FanDuel have this same game parlay feature. So for example, let's say we wanted to parlay together two outcomes from um, the same game. So the Packers are away. So let's say we're confident the Packers are going to score over 23.5 points. So maybe our first leg is over 23.5 points minus 120. Okay. And then let's say we also thought the Packers were going to cover the spread. They were going to cover the plus three point spread, um, which is minus 110 odds. So we're parlaying together two things, Green Bay Packers plus three minus 110 over 23.5 points for the Packers, minus 120. So if you go to a parlay calculator and you put in minus 120 for the over 23.5 points and then minus 110 for Packers plus three, you see that if these events were uncorrelated, in other words, if you were picking a minus 120 from one game and a minus 110 from a different game, the sports book would give you plus 250 odds. Plus 250 odds would be the fair odds that the sports books are giving you for your parlay. However, this parlay calculator does not apply if you are parlaying together things from the same game. Right here we can see the calculator tells me I'm supposed to be getting plus 250, but FanDuel is only giving me plus 145 to bet over 23.5 points for the Packers and Packers plus three. And the reason for that is these two things are correlated, right? If the Packers cover the plus three point spread, they most likely scored more points. So they are more likely to have scored over 23.5 points. So this is something referred to as conditional probability. And you know, you can look it up is essentially if we knew the Packers were to score over 23.5 points and this bet were to win, then Packers plus three becomes much more likely to hit right? Given that the Packers score 24, 24 or, or more points, they're going to be a much higher likelihood of covering the plus three point spread, right? So we can see 49ers minus three is minus 110 odds. Packers plus three is minus 110 odds. But if we parlay these things together, if we bet on the Packers to score over 23.5 points and the 49ers to cover the minus three point spread, Fanduel will give us plus 627. So then they're giving us way better odds than the plus 250 that, you know, the parlay calculator spits out. So again, this makes sense. If the Packers score 24 or more points, that means to cover the minus three point spread, right? The Packers, or I mean, the 49ers would have to score 28 or more points, which is more difficult. So essentially what you can do is if you are parlaying together things from the same game is you can play with this correlation number and maybe you can build out your own model to try to find spots where you have edge in sports betting, right? So you can kind of play around with it. It's it's a little interesting, right? So another thing I could do, let's say I do first touchdown score, Aaron Jones, plus 650, and Packers plus three, right? Then you get plus 1042. But if I go to 49ers minus three, you get plus 2232. Again, Aaron Jones is a player for the Packers. If he's the guy scoring the first touchdown, that means the Packers scored the first touchdown and they're up 7-0. So these two events are correlated because you know the Packers are scoring first and they're going to be up at least 6-0, probably 7-0. So they're more likely to cover the plus three point spread, right? So you can play around with these things and you can see how correlation ultimately affects um, the bet that you are getting, right? So this is just a quick video that explains a little bit about correlation in sports betting. And if you're building out a sports betting model and you're placing bets from the same game and you're parlay, parlaying them together, which many sports books now allow you to do, you have to consider correlation in the game. Um, so I hope you found this video helpful. Like we can see here as well. What if I wanted to bet total points over 24.5? in the second half. Maybe I think the second half is going to be high scoring and I want to bet under 50.5 points in the game. Then I'm going to be getting plus 649, right? If there's 25 plus points in the second half, 
then the likelihood that the game goes under is much lower. Whereas if I parlay together over 24.5 first, second half total points and over 50.5 um, total points in the game, like these outcomes are very correlated. If we go into, if, you know, there's 25 plus points in the second half, then it's much more likely that the game goes over. So it's pretty interesting to play around with these um, same game parlay features and see how correlation affects the payout that the sports books are giving you because it's not going to be equal to what you typically get from a parlay calculator, right? Like we can see, even if we pick two minus 110s, minus 110s. Like if I'm betting Rodgers to throw under versus over, you can see that the odds vary. If I'm betting over 50.5 points in the game and Rodgers to throw under 276.5 passing yards, I get plus 355. Minus 110, minus 110. If I change this to over, I'm only getting plus 177. For Rodgers to throw 277 plus passing yards and also for the game to go over, right? That's not the same as what the calculator is going to tell me, which is minus 110, minus 110, plus 264. The parlay calculator tells me you should be getting plus 264.46 on this. But because these things are correlated, you can see it changes in one situation the one with positive correlation, right? Rogers throwing over 276.5 passing yards and the game going over 50.5 points. Um, you're only getting plus 177 in the case with positive correlation. So you're getting worse odds than if these events were uncorrelated. Now at the same time, if you want to bet the under, you're getting better odds, right? Plus 355. But one final thing. So again, like placing a same game parlay is much different than placing a bet where it's just minus 110 in this game, you know, minus 110 in this game. Then we see the plus 264 here, right? Because these events are uncorrelated. The Seahawks covering the minus 2.5 point spread has no relationship to the Browns covering the minus 7.5 point spread. These things aren't related. They're not correlated, which is why you get the stereotypical payout from a parlay calculator. That all goes down the drain once you include correlation and start placing bets, you know, in the same game, which is essentially what you get on a lot of these sports books with the same game parlay feature. You need to consider correlation. And that's also true for these odds boosts, right? Antonio Gibson to score a touchdown in Washington football team to win versus the Bills. This is an odds boost from plus 480 odds to plus 800 odds, right? If Antonio Gibson scores a touchdown, he's a player for the Redskins, the Redskins are more likely to win the game. So if we actually just go here, right, we can see Washington football team. I apologize. So if we go to the Washington football team game, we can see that, you know, they're the Bills they're like plus 300 underdogs, right? Or plus 280 underdogs, plus 285, something like that, according to Pinnacle, sharpest bookmaker. Now, if Antonio Gibson scores a touchdown, then they're going to be slightly more likely to win the game. If we knew Antonio Gibson was going to score a touchdown, maybe the Redskins are plus 230, plus 225, something like that. So long story short, in a lot of these boosts, in a lot of these bets that you're considering, if they are in the same game, you really need to consider correlation, right? This, you don't have to. Cardinals, Ravens, Broncos to win. None of these things are correlated. You find the fair probability of the Cardinals winning, the Ravens winning, the Broncos winning. You multiply them together, you get a fair price. Um, the, a lot of these other things are correlated. Error, Aaron Rodgers to have one plus passing touchdown in each half, that's probably correlated to something, right? Um, this has correlation. New York Yankees to win and DJ LeMahieu to have record two plus hits. There's some correlation there. If LeMahieu has two plus hits, then the Yankees are more likely to have more runs on the board. So they're more likely to win the game, right? There's some form of correlation here and that's very difficult to price. That's very difficult to analyze. So what we can actually do is if we go to the Yankees game, so we can try to see if we can see what they give you normally. So we can go to the Yankees game, and we can go to same game parlay, and then we can go to, to record two plus hits, and we can go to LeMahieu and the Yankees. And we can see that they're giving you plus 233 odds. The Red Sox and the Yankees are the same, right? So there's positive correlation because if I go to the parlay calculator, 
what you can see is we are putting in plus 110, minus 108. So if these things were uncorrelated, I should be getting plus 304, but they're only giving me plus 233. However, if I was to bet it on the Red Sox, they're giving me plus 407, which is better than this. Again, positive, negative correlation in sports betting. So here, they're only giving you plus 233. What's the boost to? The boost is to plus 300. Is that good? Is that not good? It's really hard to tell. But um, like it's very hard to tell. It's very difficult to price. But again, like you have to be thinking about correlation if you are betting these boosts or you are placing bets in the same game. So I hope you found this video on correlation helpful. Um, in future videos, you know, we'll kind of use odds jam to, you know, look for some profitable betting opportunities. Like we can already see there are some pretty good ones. Um so yeah, I hope you found this video helpful and um, thank you for your time. Bye.